Hi, it's Sarah, your career and leadership expert, and I hope you're enjoying this Halloween week, if it's Halloween where you are. I'm going to continue um, along a theme that I started last week, um, and this is again around careers, uh, but however, as I mentioned so often, a lot of the tools and techniques that I share with you can be used in other areas of your life as well. So um, quite often when I'm coaching people, the tools that I use with them can sometimes be used in other areas of their life as well. So what I'm going to continue talking about is, you know, I'm worried. I'm worried about my career, but I'm scared to change jobs. I'm scared to make that change. And I think I'm hearing a lot of that from my clients at the moment in terms of, you know things are difficult out there at the moment it takes a long time to find a job etc etc but there are jobs out there and there are numbers to suggest that um, certain sectors are recruiting and I'm going to go more into that this evening so very often we let our fears get in the way of us making progress we may feel like we want to make a change but we're just a bit scared to do it and sometimes what that means is we tolerate a situation. Again, this is about careers, but maybe it could be about a relationship. We tolerate a situation for so long that we suppress our needs and our wants and our desires. And over time, studies have shown that the longer you do that, the more of an impact it has on your mental and physical health. And to do that, we make up all sorts of excuses to ourselves. You know, we sort of make excuses about, you know, I'm too young, I'm too old, I don't know what I want. It's too difficult. I don't know where to start. And in some sort of ways, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. These are sometimes excuses. And I mean, underlying that, you probably know that you don't want to be in your job at the moment or anymore. So it's a really good exercise to really get a notepad out and jot down. What excuses do you think you are uh, making for remaining where you are in a situation that's making you happy? And what I've discovered through working with clients and helping them start to get comfortable with change, and let's face it, changing your career is a big change for many people. I know we change careers more frequently, but very often many of my clients are scared to do that, which is why they come to me, because we work through their goals and their plans and their desires and their career. And I've been coaching someone recently who has made a decision to leave her job and go into temporary work because... She tolerated it for so long. It was having such a massive impact on her relationships, other areas of her life. You know, she wasn't making the progress in her role that she wanted because she wasn't really motivated, that it really had an impact on other areas of her life. And it gets to a point where we can no longer tolerate things, you know, it like builds up and up and up. So another good exercise is to make a list of what am I tolerating? You know, what am I tolerating? What are the pros and cons of staying where I am? And make sure you're not just inventing things to stay where you are. And I think I really believe we should trust our gut instincts in this regard. So I've been working with a lady who actually, we went through a load of exercises and she's got a massive creative desire. Everything she said, and I said, have you noticed what you're saying about what you like, what you enjoy, things that you enjoy, you know, things that you've done in the past that you really enjoy. And she's got a massive creative side of her that she was massively suppressing. And um, she was in a job that was very, uh, what's the word, very routine, very challenging, very structured, allowed for no creativity. So she stayed in it because she was worried about what her family would say. And I said, well, look, sometimes it's not always best to tell your family everything. That's why we have coaches and mentors. You might have friends you can trust to talk about your situation, but very often our family will say things like, oh, it's a good job, why don't you stay? Because they're talking, at things for, talking about things from their own experience, not yours, and it can hold us back. So once she'd got over that and learned how to address things with her family and decided what she was not going to tell her family because they would try and talk her out of it, she was just like, great, you know what, I'm going into temporary work, I'm okay with that because the longer she was staying in this career that didn't suit her at all, the more it was suppressing her feelings, the more it was getting her down and it wasn't allowing her to open up her mindset to opportunities, it was closing her mindset down. So we do make lots of excuses. And what I'd like you to do, as well as writing down what you're tolerating, what excuses you're making, is imagine yourself in six months, one year, two years, five years, 10 years time, what would your older self say to you, to your younger self about your career? 
How would you feel about being exactly in the same position during those time frames? How would you feel about being in exactly the same position in even a few months, a year, five years, ten years? How are you really going to feel? And what advice would your older self give to your younger self at this point in time? And how would you feel in those time frames if you stay where you are? What impact will it have on the rest of your life? Because very often when we're not happy in our careers, it can impact relationships, health, all sorts of other areas. Because basically we're demotivated, we're just getting by. And who wants to live a life where we're just getting by? You can also write down what's the worst that could happen if I change my career. And the chances are when you write these things down and have a look at them, they're not as scary as you first believe they might be. So I really want you to think about those things. What would your older self say to your younger self? What advice would you give to your younger self? What excuses are you making? What are you tolerating and over tolerating? So, you know, I'm here to tell you that I'm working with people at the moment that are changing careers and getting new jobs. So it is possible. The earlier you start planning and breaking down your plan into goals, the easier it's going to be. Because if you don't start now, you're going to be six months down the line, one year down the line. And I suspect it's going to impact other areas of your life and your mental and physical well-being, as studies have shown. So... Let's have a think. What other goal? What other things can I share with you? Well, we've already said change can be scary. Any change can be scary. Changing your career can be scary. So face those fears. Write them down. Don't pretend they don't exist. Don't run away. And how about seeing this as an exciting adventure, an opportunity to meet new colleagues, maybe even make friends in a new workplace, work in an environment that suits you, learn new skills, get new experiences, grow as a person rather stagnate stagnate like a plant that hasn't been watered for many years there are lots of opportunities it can be scary but turn that into an adventure or an opportunity to learn things embrace the unknown it can be such a huge area of growth if we just embrace the unknown and yes it can be scary but see as an adventure something different something new a new passion and you don't know where that's going to lead to it's really also important to have a clear vision of your ideal career what does your ideal career look like? What, who are you with? What are you doing? Where are you based? What kind of activities are you doing? What kind of culture do you want to work with? And what are your career values? What's important to you? Is it having a massive salary? Is it having variety? Is it teamwork? Is it working on your own? Is it working from home? I know a lot of us are doing that at the moment. Is it the opportunity to have a lot of variety? Is it an opportunity to work in a certain sector or a certain skill that you're drawn to? So have about think about those things and break them down into short, medium and long term goals. Because if you break them down into stages, they look an awful lot less scary than if you're trying to cope with everything. So break those goals down into journey goals and baby steps. So some of the excuses that I hear are we're too old. I'm too young, I don't have enough time. And again, these are all excuses we make. And I want you to be really honest with yourself and look and write down about the excuses that you're making. Sometimes as well, when I speak to people, they're scared of letting their employers down. It's like, oh, I don't want to let them down if I leave. Well, let me tell you, most companies will survive without you. I hate to tell you that. Nobody's indispensable. It does, but that means that if you feel that way, and everyone should be doing this really, is make sure you're giving it your all to the, less, the last moment if you are choosing to leave. Because your reputation is everything. It's quite a small world in certain industries. So you want to make sure that you're leaving with the best reputation and people think fondly of you and can recommend you perhaps. They're not going to be upset. If they're a good employer, they're going to either offer you opportunities where you are or they're going to wish you the best of luck. Maybe there's an open door for you to return at a later stage when the company's changed or when you feel like you want to go back. Maybe you don't. But just give it your all to the last moment. And don't worry about letting other people down because our happiness really has to come first in this regard. Sometimes as well, we identify with our jobs. I know I felt like this when I went from permanent employment to self-employment. I was like, hang on a minute. If I'm not going into an office, you know, and I'm not sitting in board meetings, how does that feel? Well, I considered myself my own board after a while and my own CEO, so I reframed that. And sometimes we can really identify with our job and our role and our status, our job title, what we do, 
But just remember that you're more than your job. You're a complex, well-rounded human being with lots of interests, lots of qualities, lots of diverse skills. So don't let that hold you back. It's the opportunity to create a new identity or take your identity and empower it somewhere else. You know, and some people are worried in case they move jobs and they don't like the new job that they are moving into. Well, you can go on informational interviews, you can investigate the perks of the company, you can investigate the company and the people that work there. There's all sorts of resources online like Glassdoor, although I'd be a bit wary about some of the feedback on there because sometimes it's disgruntled employees. You can also go to virtual networking events to meet people who work at other companies. What are you interested in? Go to the virtual networking events that are happening at the moment and find out more about the company, what people like about their jobs and what the culture's like. Just remember that your experience may be very different because you're a unique person. But you can find an awful lot more that will help you settle into the idea of making a move. What I also hear from my clients is the fear that what if I can't hack it, especially if it's a step up the ladder. Well then, have a think about what skills do I have at the moment, soft skills or technical skills that I can transfer to the job I want. What additional skills do I need to learn? So you can make that transition a bit easier for yourself. So really do a bit of a skills audit on yourself. What do you have now? And chances are you've got tons of skills. I coach so many people that say, oh, I don't know what skills I have. And then when we go through it, they realise they've got lots and lots of skills. Think about what additional skills you might like to learn. Also, take the opportunity to learn from your past. What worked for you, what didn't work for you, and trust those lessons. Where did you really fly in your career? What were you doing? What culture were you, were you in? What made you happy there? What kind of people were you working with now? Have a real honest assessment and be able to acknowledge your own skills and see where you might need some additional learning and support. Very often I coach people that are taking the leap from manager to leader because they feel they need some new skills like influence, uh, leading teams, gravitas. And um, maybe if you feel that's something you need to work on, then acknowledge that and figure out how to get those, those new skills. Sometimes as well, we can be scared of being the new person, but don't worry, you won't be the first new person in that new role. Push yourself out there, get out of the comfort zone, push yourself to meet new people, seek out new experiences, join new clubs and, and associations outside of work. I know we might be a little bit limited at the moment, higher then you know, we might be a bit limited at the moment, but really push yourself to meet new people, find new networking opportunities, get yourself out of your comfort zone because very often we get into a comfort zone without realising it and that comfort zone can actually become quite uncomfortable and we can stagnate. So, you know, have a, you know, have a think about how can I expand my networks, how can I get out of my comfort zone because chances are that what we fear isn't as bad as we think they are. Those fears aren't as bad as we think they are. And you can write down your fears and your concerns and think about, well, hang on a minute, let's have a look at this list. And very often when I get my clients to do this, they realise, do you know what, it's not as bad as I thought it was. You know, what am I, what am I worried about? Well, now I look at it on paper, it's not as bad as I think. So have a look at those things. And don't let your demons hold you back. Because very often our imagination plays tricks on us to keep us stuck where we are. OK, so what I've covered tonight is, you know, the, the physical and the mental health impact of staying stuck and staying where you are. How you can identify the excuses you're making to keep stuck. And it's very simple. Just write them down. If you catch yourself saying, I can't do this, I'm not this, I'm this, then make a list of those excuses that you're making to yourself to remain stuck you know, and, and realise and think, well, hang on a minute, what impact is this having on myself? Think about yourself when you're older. What advice would you give to yourself now in a year, two years, five years, ten years time? And how are you going to feel if you don't start to make progress now and realise that it does have an impact on other areas of our life, like relationships? Embrace any new role or opportunity as an adventure. Face it, step into it. I mean, I've done it. You know, get out of that comfort zone and do your research. Have a look at what skills you have, what new skills you might need and what's the company like that you want to go to. Do some research online. There's loads of places to go and have a look and do something that posh, pushes, pushes, pushes you outside of your comfort zone. You know, we all make up excuses to stay where we are.
and realise that you are more than your career. Yes, your career or your job is something that you do, but you are a complex human being. You've got loads of skills, loads of assets, loads of other things about you. You are not just your job. Your job doesn't identify with you. And I would argue that if that's something of real concern, maybe you need to look at the balance of your work because the chances are if you completely identify with your career, Yes, a career is an important part of us, but maybe we're not living the other parts of our life like relationships, we're not making friendships and things like that. And don't worry, you know, when you change jobs, it's never as scary as you think. So that's why doing this research is really important. And don't worry about being the new person. You know, if you're going to a good company, they'll help you feel welcome. You can actually sit down with your line manager and have like maybe a 90 day plan and discuss your development plan to help you make a soft landing into the company. And have a look at some of the new skills you might want to acquire before you get there. So yeah, tonight that was just a continuation of a video that I started last week about what you can do if you're feeling scared about changing your role. And I know things are a bit disconcerting at the moment, but when haven't they been? When is it, you know, you can make a start now. You can just take one small step into your new career. It doesn't have to be a big step. Just take that small step and see where it takes you. If you'd like a free copy of my career audit that will help you with some of these exercise exercises, then drop a comment on my Facebook page or send me a direct message. And I hope you have a great weekend. And if you celebrate Halloween, don't let the ghosts get you. All right, then. Have a good evening. Take care. Bye.